Unravel is an 8th gen 2D platformer released in 2016 by Swedish indie developer Coldwood Interactive. Apparently to cash in on the whole cute yarn creature thing, Nintendo started with the Epic Yarn and Woolly World games. To be fair, I've never played Epic Yarn or Woolly World, so I'm not going to attempt to compare them to Unravel in this Unravel PS4 review. Nothing against those titles, but I just haven't kept up with Nintendo hardware-wise since the 90s or so. And for me, that was actually the major selling point with Unravel. It's multi-platform, not Nintendo exclusive, so you can play it on a PC, on an Xbox, or if you're like me, on a PS4. And so I don't mean to be disparaging when I say Coldwood was looking to cash in on the whole yarn thing. I mean, the first time I saw Yarny Unravel's cute woolen protagonist, I was like, finally, a yarn-based game for the rest of us. So I snatched it up on the PlayStation Store. And well, for me, the other major selling point was the fact that Unravel is a few years old nowadays, so they had it on sale for $4.99, so I had to get it. And I'm glad I did. It's a fun game, worth every penny, especially if you can pick it up on one of the sales, and I even wound up doing a full no death playthrough of it. I'll put up one of those card things so you can click on that if you're interested in seeing a full playthrough. The no death thing is actually kind of fun with this game. I think it's a bit easy to just go through it with the checkpoints and all. So one criticism is that they could have put in a variety of difficulty settings, but we'll get into all that a bit later on. But first things first, let's just talk about what Unravel is. Like I said, it's a 2D platformer, so the mechanics are pretty basic, but it's made for 8th gen consoles and counterpart PC hardware. So the graphics are bright and colorful and richly detailed. So as far as I can tell, Nowadays, all the 2D platformers need some kind of gimmick to set them apart so we're not still just rehashing Mario 30 years later. You know, a 2016 2D platformer mimicking a game released in 1985? Can you believe it's been 30 years? 35 now that it's 2020? That's right, Mario's 35 years old and he doesn't look a day over what? 47? 48? So the gimmick with Unravel is, instead of a slightly creepy, overweight, chain-smoking, sweaty plumber, you get to play as a cute little yarn creature named Yarny. But to be fair, at least Mario always wore overalls, so you never had to worry about this kind of thing you know, plumber. Yarny, by contrast, just goes around naked. And to be even more fair to Mario, Yarny might not be such a nice guy after all, but we'll get into all that a bit later on. So right out of the gate, they're playing the cuteness card, but the fact that Yarny is made of yarn lets him do all this fancy stuff that most 2D platform people can't, which mainly has to do with extending his yarn body one prehensile strand at a time into the world he navigates in order to perform a handy variety of rope-like functions. So Yarny can toss a strand of yarn out like a lasso and grab onto things. If the thing he grabs is movable, he can pull it. If the thing he grabs is stationary and somewhere above him, he can climb up to it or swing from it like Tarzan or Lara Croft. Incidentally, unlike Lara Croft, Yarny's swinging is well designed, meaning that the physics for Yarny's swings and jumps more or less correspond to reality, meaning an unravel swinging from branch to branch like a monkey is intuitive and satisfying, even though in-game Yarny seems to weigh a bit more than a creature made entirely out of yarn would actually weigh in real life. But anyway, check out my review of Tomb Raider Underworld if you want to see what a crummy rope swinging mechanic based in frustrating fantasy physics is all about. Anyway, Yarny can also tie yarn from his body between two fixed points to make himself a trampoline to jump off of, or a bridge that he can push or pull movable objects across. So that's Yarny. He's small, like three inches tall, small, and cute, but he thriftily leverages his cuteness to get around his world, which is made for humans, so the player gets to experience everyday life from the perspective of the kids in Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, if you're partial to that kind of schlock. Or maybe a better comparison to make is Yarny's a lot like Chibi Robo, if you ever played one of those games. He's basically Chibi Robo as a yarn creature. He's got all the same personality traits, innocent, earnest, endearing, dedicated, all that cutesy stuff. And where Chibi Robo, the tiny robot, needed to plug his tail into an outlet every so often so he wouldn't suddenly collapse on the floor in a heap of useless scrap. So Yarny has the counterpart weakness for a creature made entirely of yarn. He can only travel so far before his yarn runs out and he gets stuck. So I guess the game gets its name from the fact that Yarny is constantly unraveling himself as he progresses. Fortunately though, Yarny's creator is a forgetful and disorganized old lady who's left all these tufts of yarn lying around for him to refashion into his own body, just like the T-1000 used to do whenever someone broke a thermometer. The tufts of yarn also serve as the game's checkpoints, by the way. So Yarny goes mostly through the levels from left to right, and the goal is to find these little felt badge things that the forgetful and disorganized old lady dropped or lost or something. Every time Yarny finds a badge, he returns to the dining room in the old lady's house and affixes the badge to her photo album on the table. And every time a badge gets affixed to the album, more photos appear in the album, giving the player some backstory on the old lady, and I guess symbolizing some kind of fleeting memory repair? I don't really know. It's one of those stories that's pretty loose and 
told through images as opposed to words, so it's open to interpretation. There's a total of 12 badges to find, and each badge has its own level, and the levels get progressively darker in theme as you advance through them. The first level seemed to take place in idyllic locales where the old lady raised her kids decades prior, and we later proceed to the decidedly sadder premises of what seems to be kids going off to college, environmental pollution caused by corporate recklessness, and the death of a spouse. I'd like to think that the husband's heart attack was somehow related to the whole hazardous byproducts and the water supply debacle, but there's no explicit connection. Like I say, you can almost sort of read into it what you want. But the story is more about setting an emotional tone than having an explicit critiquable plot. Yarny's supposed to be this little magical do-gooder creature who'll help the old lady recover her memories against all odds in an oversized and bewildering world. And as he charts his path through said world, he shows a lot of emotion for an ambiguously anthropomorphic yarn guy. Joy, confusion, triumph, despair, perseverance, affection. So, you know, players are supposed to relate. The whole thing's supposed to be a metaphor for the human condition and all that. And as you might expect, what you don't get in a creature whose meaning in life is to help people is the old ultraviolence, as Alex from Clockwork Orange would say, that's so typical among most video game protagonists. Yarny can't equip a shotgun and ram its barrel against someone's stomach to max out its damage output at a close range. And he can't sneak up behind someone, combat knife at the ready, and extract mission intel before summarily executing them. There are actually enemies in Unravel, but you got to deal with them in more pacifist ways, trapping them in cages, dazzling them with fungal spores, ducking behind cover as they swoop past you or simply outrunning them. Outrunning that rodent on the mountain track is actually a pretty tense moment. You can easily miss one of the swings and get thrashed apart in the rodent's maw or simply fall into a pit. There are also some other skill-based platforming sections to watch out for as well. This piston section and off the rails can be tricky. The hint is to jump when the platform is at its highest. You also get this long jump in the same level. Easy to miss and you need to be holding up on the stick when you reach the wire so you start climbing. And then there's this weird lasso hanging section and how much is enough it took me too long to figure out. I actually was attempting a near impossible alternate pathway where you swing onto that S-shaped gear before I realized you just gotta let out enough rope to hang under the electric coil. But most of the challenge comes from the puzzles Yarny's got to figure out, and this is where Unravel has received some criticism online. Basically, the thing with the puzzles is you see most of what the game has to throw at Yarny in the first three or four levels. You know, things like if you see two tie-down points close to one another, that probably means you're going to need to make a rope bridge between them. If you get to a ledge that's too tall for you to jump on, that probably means you need to look for a movable object to pull up to it. And these same kind of situations repeat over and over throughout Unravel, even though you've already seen and mastered them before you even get to the game's halfway point. Yeah, and on the one hand, that's a fair point, but on the other hand, in addition to all the repetitive stuff, each level also throws at least two or three new challenges at Yarny to keep him from getting too cocky about building simple rope bridges and pushing objects up to high ledges. So how about this situation in Mountain Trek where you gotta figure out how to use this heavy looking spool, or the situation in Off the Rails where you gotta manage this raft? And some of the unique challenges really require a somewhat nuanced understanding of the game's basic mechanics, like this puzzle in Off the Rails or this puzzle in Down in a Hole where you gotta set up your lasso beforehand to proceed. Anyway, Unravel, fun playthrough. Recommend giving it a shot, especially if you can get it on sale. Just put it on your list, you know? Oh, and before I sign off, there were a couple things that I said we'd get to later, so here it goes. First thing, difficulty. Yes, this game's a bit easy and they could've upped the challenge a bit. As I said, there are only 12 levels and each will probably take an hour or less on a first playthrough, and they only take 10 minutes or so when you learn what to do, so that's what you get. Did I mention to wait till this one goes on sale? Each level has five yarn flowers to find in hard to reach places if you're into the completionist thing, but I think they could have been a bit more creative with upping the challenge and the platforming aspect of the level design to balance out the puzzles a bit. Second thing, Yarny's not such a nice guy. Yep, he's actually the devil. Think about it and you'll see. Or just look at him. He's red, he's skinny, he's got that big head with two horns sticking out of it. He's got that long stringy tail, he's got those pupilless gaping white eyes. He's obviously the devil, but he's not a traditional devil sort of character. Maybe he'd be more like a John Milton or William Blake kind of devil. You know, he's like the endearing cute devil who craftily lures you to 
to perdition with his whole adorableness thing. So if you play this game, just watch out for that. Anyway, before this gets too theological, I guess we'll just leave it at that. My name's Buzzin1, and if you got something out of this Unravel PS4 review, kindly hit the like button. If you want to see other reviews like this one and other gaming-related stuff, have a look at my channel page. Just click on the icon of that enthusiastic-looking dog under this video, and he'll lead you there. And if you like some of the other content on offer at the channel page, consider subscribing. I would appreciate it. Anyway, until next time, thanks so much for watching.